My daughter, Angie, was um, 29. She was killed in a vehicular um, homicide on um, March 18th of 2012. She had a uh, um, a friend that was driving her and um, he was speeding, um, crossed a highway um, at a high rate of speed and the car rolled a total of five, five times. Um, my daughter was thrown out of the vehicle. Um, how I started out getting um, my contact here with Waypoint is uh, I was involved in the survivors program. What I needed from uh, the survivors program at that time was some guidance and a place that I could let out my grief because I couldn't do that at home. Moving forward for me means I can help others and I can help guide them and I can make it a little bit easier than what it was for maybe me back then, but it gives gives myself purpose and that I'm giving my daughter something that she didn't get to have because she was taken out so soon in her life. Uh, in 2009, I was in a, um, an abusive marriage. You know, but I never really identified with being in an, in an abusive marriage because the, the physical violence, the, the physical abuse wasn't an everyday occurrence. In the spring of 2009, uh, where my husband broke into my home um, in the early morning hours and attacked me, basically, uh, he dragged me into the basement of our home, uh, tied me up, he gagged me, he assaulted me, and kept me captive for several hours. Once daybreak came and he kind of realized that um, he had to make plans, you know, what his next steps were, and um, he decided to go to his parents' house to get a gun. His plan was to um, commit suicide, to kill me, or to uh, just, something was going to happen. Um, he did leave, and when that happened, I was able to escape the bindings uh, around my feet. Um, I was able to get to a phone and call police and call my mother. The police came. Thankfully, they, they got there before he returned to the house. From there, I was taken to um, the emergency room and um, just underwent various, you know, examinations. Um, and that's where I first met my Waypoint advocate. I just remember the advocate just offering services, letting me know that she was available giving me her cell phone number, giving me all the contact information that I needed, um, and allowing me to come to them when I was ready. It took me a while to really, again, kind of identify with, um, identify as a, a victim, and it took even longer for me to start identifying as a survivor. Recognizing that what happened to me was just something that happened to me. It didn't identify me. It enabled me to grow into a different person. Inspiring people to move forward is, um, it's really a deep subject and, and it means many different things to many people. First of all, we meet people where they're at, and that is so important. We don't look at people and think, well, they should be this far along in their journey. Everyone is different, and everyone has uh, traumas and things that have happened in their lives that we probably don't know anything about. 
So we meet them where they're at and we work with them and help them find, uh, find their path and find solutions to issues that they're having. The number of people that we have served has really increased, um, especially since the pandemic. This year, uh, we served 17,000 individuals. That's 10,000 more than what we served before the pandemic. It's absolutely amazing. And it's increasing in all areas, housing, childcare, domestic violence. The good news is we are there and we are able to meet these needs. We also have to go with what we have funding for. And um, sometimes we'll get an influx of funding and are able to help more people. And other times, you know, it's a little, it's tough. Um, but our staff does everything possible to help as many people as possible. And what we do for a living here, whether it's housing, coordinated entry, domestic violence, domestic violence uh, homicide, There's nobody, again, in Cedar Rapids that's dealing with that. That many levels of different things that are going on. And it's an acknowledgement that people are not suffering from just one thing. We have a great volunteer structure, um, and it just depends on how much time you want to give. We can use it. We can use that help. Also by, um, quite frankly, donating. Um, that is really important to us, and that's how we're able to help others. Um, it's expensive to provide these services, and yes, we do get funding um, from different grants and from uh, the government, but a good, good portion comes from the community and caring individuals. All you need to do is call us and say, here's what I'd like to do for Waypoint is volunteer my time and my talents, and here, here's what I'm good at. If you don't have to do time to do any of that, you can also donate monies to the organization, which would provide a night stay and a shelter, goods and services that they need that we can provide here at Waypoint. You know, we've been around for over 100 years, and I'm not bragging, but that says a lot. That tells us that this community believes in what we do, and what we're doing is extremely important. I know we save lives. I'm positive. And we've been doing that for years. But the only way that we can do that is with the help of our community. And so I just appreciate your confidence in us, believing in us, and supporting us.